I've been asked a couple of times in the past about how I light my images, how I light my renders. And it's always kind of a tough question to answer because usually lighting a scene is more than placing just two or three lights. And it's very hard to explain how a render is lit without uh, showing it in a video. So I wanted to do a quick breakdown of how I lit the renders for this uh, Oreo project for which I made a couple of product renders of an Oreo cookie. And what you can see here is uh, one of the final renders. We have the Oreo cookie and in the back some milk splashing against the cookie. And based on the reference I gathered before starting to um, build this scene, I uh, knew I wanted to create something that was kind of soft and brightly lit. So that's what I was going for with uh, with this setup. And here you can see the Blender file. The lighting setup consists of 10 lights. And I'm using all kinds of lights. I'm using, uh, as you can see, area lights, spotlights, point lines. So I usually don't restrict myself to using only one specific type of lamp. I just use whatever works best. And the way I um, built these lighting setups which is very important, is that I go one light at a time. And when you start the lighting process, it's very easy to uh, rush it and add too many lights too quickly, which quickly results in a flat image because everything is, is lit and there's no, sh no shadow defining the shapes and so on. So personally, I think it's very important that you take the lighting process slowly and uh, work one light at a time. And I'm going to show you in a moment uh, specifically what I mean by that. So I'm going to disable all the lights and I'm going to start with this one, which uh, if I recall correctly, was the first light I added. It's a, a spotlight and I knew I wanted to have the light to be focused on the surface of the Oreo cookie. So I wanted that part to be the brightest part in the image, basically. So I wanted that part to be accentuated in the lighting. And that's why I started out with the spotlight aimed at, uh, at the surface and with a cone that would cause um, little light to be spilled over on uh, other parts of the image. What I usually do with spotlights is when I place them, I set the radius to zero which makes it easier to um, see the placement of the light and uh, to see where the cone is actually aiming. And then when I once I have the position of the light and the direction of the light set, I start to increase the radius to something that um, looks good. So now I have my main light. I know what direction it's, from, it's coming from and I know uh, what it um, accentuates in the image. Next, I think about what kinds of secondary shapes I want to have accentuated in the image. And in this case, I wanted the stream of milk at the bottom in the image to um, have some reflections on the side. That way, the shape of the stream would be more defined in the image. In order to define the outline of an object, it's usually a good idea to use rim lighting. So I used these two area lights um, coming from the back, which defines the outline of the um, of the stream coming towards the cookie. Next, because uh, the stream itself is still very dark, I add a fill light. So this is another um, uh, area light, scaled up so it would be softer. And I moved it a little to the side so it wouldn't uh, flatten out the uh, shape of this cylindrical uh, geometry too much. This way it's still directional and we have both uh, highlights and shadows which helps to um, communicate the shape. So right now I still have a lot of dark areas in the image. So I added a fill light and because my main light source is directional coming from uh, the top, I wanted this fill light to come from the top as well as to not flatten out the image too much because shadows would be primarily at the bottom of the cookie right here. This is, this is where the darkest part of the image would be. And if I had the fill light come from the other side, and light uh, this, uh, it might flatten out the image too much. So instead I had it come from a similar direction uh, that I had my key light set to, as you can see here. And this is a spotlight with a white cone and a large radius as to um, 
not throw any harsh shadows on the object. I wanted to have uh, quite soft lighting, so I wanted to avoid throwing shadows on the object, which is why I tend to use larger lights. So now the problem is that it's still pretty dark in some areas and the milk doesn't look as much like milk as I wanted it to because um, in order for it to look like milk it needs subsurface scattering but in order for subsurface scattering to have um, a really noticeable effect it has to be backlit. So I added a, a very large area light at the bottom uh, coming from below the cookie and shining through the milk which gives it a, a rim light around the splashes of the milk and b it makes the milk look more organic due to the subsurface scattering which previously um, didn't really take effect because there was almost no light shining through the milk. This also quite nicely lights the areas of the cookie that were previously too dark. So now the main lighting setup is already completed but there are a few issues I still had to fix. If you look at the outer peaks of the milk splash you can see that the droplets sort of get darker which is uh, because uh, most of the light is focused towards the middle of the image and uh, also because the droplets are thicker than the rest of the splashes the light passing through the surface gets dimmer so these are darker right now which uh, looks kind of weird so i added a couple of small um, point lights specifically around these droplets to illuminate them and they all have a very low strength as to not uh, overpower uh, the rest of the image so these don't stand out because uh, you wouldn't want the, these areas to be accentuated by the light which would again look unnatural I just wanted to uh, sort of add a fill light which was very concentrated to these areas and that's why I used very small point lights and all of them had a very low strength and finally there was one more problem which is that the bottom of the cookie right there is too dark and especially when you look at it in contrast to the milk it looks kind of out of place if these two areas which are directly next to each other have such a strong contrast in lighting so i just added a small area light as a fill light to uh, illuminate the cookie now for my workflow blender is only sort of part one of the lighting process obviously most of the lighting is done in Blender, but uh, once I render the image, I still do a lot of adjustments in post. Uh, right now, if you look at the, uh, the raw render, uh, number one, it's pretty flat. But more importantly, if you, look, for example, look at the middle of the cookie, uh, that part isn't accentuated as much as I wanted it to be. And uh, there are a bunch of uh, small adjustments I still have to make in order to um, make the image look less flat and it's important to note that this goes beyond simple um, contrast adjustments because uh, different parts of the image have different local contrasts so I never start out by just adjusting the contrast with uh, curves or levels adjustments or something like that instead I basically um, paint the light uh, using adjustment layers and masks and I also use uh, render passes, usually ambient occlusion and glossiness direct in order to um, further uh, accentuate the lighting and manipulate the shadows. So let's look at the, uh, this composite. I start out with an ambient occlusion pass, which I use to just um, add some shadow where I feel the image is uh, a bit too flat, where there's uh, lacking contrast in the shapes. So here at the bottom, you can see the milk is a bit too bright it looks a bit unnatural because of the light i added to fill the bottom part of the a of the cookie uh, but it looks a bit unnatural so i use the ambient occlusion pass to um, give it back some shadow in this area next i add the glossiness pass mm, I, in this case i used both glossiness indirect and glossiness direct uh, usually i only use glossiness direct but sometimes the indirect pass also comes in handy in this case i used it to brighten up this reflection on the milk 
as well as uh, a few other areas. Then the glossiness direct pass, which I mainly use to brighten up the top of the cookie where the key light is. Next, uh, because of the light I added uh, at the bottom of the cookie, the light spilled over on the milk. So this creates this unnatural gradient here which uh, where we have this area which is quite bright and then this dark area you can see the this line here which uh, yeah looks pretty bad so i just darken this part to get rid of that and then i brighten up the dark areas of the milk make the key light on the cookie a bit stronger then i uh, erase some of the light at the mm, bottom part of the cookie uh, again to increase the contrast between the cookie and the milk so the cookie um, stands out more from the background and finally i increase the overall brightness of the milk a bit and that's it generally i would recommend always working in 32-bit always rendering to exr files and compositing in 32-bit because this gives you a lot more um, freedom in the lighting process because you don't have to obsess over whether you over or underexposed something you can always uh, just raise the exposure when you render to, AX, to EXR. So if I accidentally overexpose something, I can just add an exposure adjustment in Affinity Photo and uh, bring back those highlights. And this just means that I don't have to, uh, before rendering, I don't have to check so much where my values are, whether or not I over or underexposed anything, specifically whether I overexposed anything. And it makes it a lot easier to do local adjustments in the image. So yeah, that's a general um, rundown of my lighting process. Maybe I'll do another one of these uh, in the future, but generally speaking, the lighting process is almost always the same. It's just important that um, you think about the shapes you want to accentuate in the image and what areas you want to draw the attention to.